Welcome back to the lab today, folks. It's a uh, weekend and I feel a little bit lazy, so I'm just going to get do a little kit. So we'll reach in and get the next one. Oh, this looks like kind of interesting. A fan of some sort. Well, let's, let's put it together and see what it does. All right, let's tear into this and see what we have here. We have instructions that are all in Chinese. Well, not really instructions. It's, <laughs> uh, we've got a schematic. It's got a 555, a 78L12, so 4.5 to 30 volts. Hmm. That's going to reduce your, if you put 4.5 in here, it's going to reduce that down to about 3 volts by the time you get to the output and you've lost all regulation. So that's kind of funky, we've got a retention over here. So it looks like some sort of speed controller here for the motor. We've got a little Darlington pair here. And the motor, potentiometer, a couple of diodes, so that, that'll give you 50%. This, this arrangement here will allow you to get a uh, perfect 50%. So. Uh, it looks like it, it probably goes all the way from uh, nothing to almost full. So it's pulsed both mu pulse my my uh, lips aren't moving today properly. Pulse width modulation. Kind of a fair here. So let's see. We got there's the PCB. Looks like got a fair heat sink as well. Go on to it. We got uh, the motor with a little fan on it. Okay, so connectors here for power and what else? I don't know. Again, it's all in Chinese. So this, this would be six volts in. Is that what it's like? Well, there's only one, it says six volts here. I don't know what that is. That goes, I guess that goes out to the motor. Yep, that goes out to the motor. And they want six volts, but they still have, do they still have a regulator? Yes, they do have a regulator. Let me see what, uh, <clears throat> that's not a regulator, that's your dollar to pair. There's your 555. So it looks like this uh, doesn't actually match the schematic unless this is the uh, regulator here. And it is, so that's the 78L12. Uh, that's what they said up here. Yeah, good. Okay, so um, I'm just going to assume I've got most of the parts here. If not, I'm sure I'll have some in my bin to kind of augment things. But why don't we get started on building it and then I'll come right back and show you the finished product. And we'll run it through its paces. And I'll discuss any matters about the kit that I find along the way. And uh, maybe even throw it up in the scope and see what kind of... Uh, waveforms we're getting out of it. All right, folks, let me get the iron heated up and build this thing up and we'll come right back. Okay, we've got it all built up. Nice big heat sink on there. Just got to trim off the legs of the transistor there. That transistor is good for 100 volts and 10 amps. So you could, uh, you could control far more than this little thing with this board, I imagine. That's assuming, of course, that it is a, a real TIP-142. It could be a fake, and uh, putting 10 amps across it might not be advisable. But uh, I'll, I'll also point out that today I did use ferrules, um, because I think that, uh, in, th in this particular case, I think that I'll be able to put them into these. Whereas I couldn't get them into the board that I built up recently, the little power supply module, which we're still working on, by the way. It's got notification that the transformer has been sent from DigiKey for that. So I imagine that this here is the power. There's a little power switch here, which is nice, a nice little touch. That kit was very easy to build. Um, the only thing I would say is that the motor didn't come with any wire for it, so I have to use my own. But if you didn't have any wire lying around, uh, the kit might be a little bit of a disappointment. 
And other than that, it was uh, it's a really easy build. I think it took a maximum of 10 minutes. Um, other than the wire, that took me another couple of minutes. But uh, do we have a positive or negative here? We do. Not that it matters with the motor. Now, I'm just wondering, I did notice though that they that there's nowhere, let me show you the schematic. There's no back EMF diode across there. That should be there. Pulsing a motor is going to produce some uh, some interesting voltages. So they should have had that on there. I didn't add one in, so we're just going to use it the way it is. If I ever do use this for anything other than today's little bit of fun, I would uh, I will put a, a diode across that capacitor there or something. Just protect that transistor from transients but other than that okay so it's hooked up let's apply the fan blade to it so we can see what's happening here and uh turn it on see what happens okay it's not doing anything there we go now it's doing something now imagine you should uh, adjust this pot here so that we have a reasonable pulse width. But one thing I know is that when I go right up to the top here, it begins to slow down again. Like there's maximum speed. Now it's slowing down as I turn it up a little bit more. Nice little kit. I'm sure that would be a lot of fun for a kid to put together. I might actually use it, you know. I do have a fume extractor over there, but sometimes I find that, you know, I have to move the fume extractor around. Anybody who's ever done a lot of soldering knows that uh, solar smoke immediately goes up into your face because your, your face is attached to your head and your head is warm and it creates a current, an, an air current that comes up and draws the smoke in. And the, the little fume extractor is great, but it doesn't create enough airflow sometimes. So you have to put it right up to what you're soldering. And then it just becomes uh, in the way. Uh, so I think maybe a little fan like this, encouraging the air to move in that direction towards the fume extractor, because fume extractor has got a charcoal filter to take the actual smoke out of the air. That might be a handy thing for this, so to build this up into a little box with a, with a fan uh, sitting on top of it and uh, be able to control that. So I think that's, that's a project. That's a project. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, let's take the motor off and let's have a look at the signals. All right, so we've got the scope is on the thing now and I've, I've just connected the, the scope up to uh, this point here, pin three and ground. So that's what those, those two little wires are on there for probing only. And it looks like this thing here, this little pot here adjusts the minimum pulse width. I guess the idea behind that is you adjust it until the thing that you're running, a little motor like this or whatever it is, just just starts to go at the, the absolute minimum pulse width. And then uh, from there you've got adjustment right up to it looks like uh, pretty well 100%, 99.735%. Now I don't know why it was slowing down, because this motor, once I got past about, uh, I guess it was around about 75%, it actually began to slow down rather than speed up. So I'm not sure what that was all about. Or maybe it's just my imagination. Maybe it's because the pulse was being close to 100%. You, I, I couldn't really feel it or hear it. I was going by that, by the sound of it. So, okay, well, there you go. Like I say, this could be a handy little module like this. this you don't definitely need that transistor to run this little motor, that's for sure. And you don't need that heat sink on it either. So uh, we could use that for something significant if you wanted to. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great little circuit. And it's a very, very uh, nice little example of what you can do with a 555. So quite educational. It'd be nice though if they, if they hired somebody you know, to help them put together some English instructions for these kits, it would really uh, be beneficial. Like, you know, a little brief 
circuit description and you know uh, maybe a little discussion about what else it could be used for other than just what comes in the kit but other than that it was a, a very nice little kit it was a little bit disappointing that it didn't come with wires for the the, the motor i have lots of wire around i'm sure everybody does so maybe it's not, maybe it's not a, a real point uh, the rest of the components are your typical Chinese components. Uh, that says it's a national 555. It could be. I, I kind of doubt it. I mean, I think... Um, I can't even remember what I paid for this kit. But I don't think it was very much. And uh, I believe that these TIP 142s... That's what it is, right? Yeah, these TIP 142s are, are in genuine form, are about three bucks. I didn't pay much more than that for the whole thing, so I don't think it's these parts are genuine. But they work, so there is that. I guess not all fake or counterfeit parts are useless. Some of them actually do the job they're supposed to do. All right, folks, thanks uh, a lot for joining me on this uh, wonderful Sunday. Um, I've, I'm actually doing this on a Saturday, but uh, you'll be seeing it on Sunday. And I hope you have a great weekend this weekend. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.